exceptional splitting of reductions of abelian surfaces in the new Thank you for the introduction. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this great opportunity to talk about my work with Anastronka, uh, which were used uh, for me as an application of the uh, arithmetic intersection theory on Hilbert's modular surfaces. So, and thank all the lecturers for giving great lectures so that I can just uh, borrow whatever theorems, properties that you state. Okay, so um, let me just uh, say the theorem was be a theorem about abelian surfaces. Uh, the proof will use the intersection theorem on Hilbert's modular surfaces. So throughout the talk, F will be a real quadratic field. And OF will be the ring of integers. And uh, um, in this talk, A will be an abelian surface defined over Q. Um, it is work in progress um, still with unknowns. We try to prove the same thing, like replace Q with a number field. But the current theorem that we put on ICAF uh, issue of midnight yesterday night is only for Q. Um, so abelian surfaces with real multiplication. So by real multiplication, here we mean the endomorphism ring of A contains OF. And uh, for the simplicity, when I extend the proof later, I give a OF polarization. Mm, if you don't know what it means, actually, in the whole talk, I just uh, use that it is a principal polarized abelian surface. And the OF polarization actually just comes from the endomorphic structure with the OF. OK, so the question we may ask is, how often does A have geometrically simple or geometrically non-simple reduction modulo prime L. So L in this talk will always be a prime. Um, so just to extend my title, splitting means splitting in the isogeny category, which is not, means geometrically non-simple. So this is, we we'll call it splitting. In the senses, so A base change to the finite field FL base change to its algebra closure is isogenous to the product of some elliptic curve. And uh, in general, that you can even ask the same question without put any restrictions saying that A is an abelian surface with real multiplication. You can just do it for any abelian varieties. So it's a conjecture of Muti and uh, Patanka. So it says A, this is, can be any abelian variety over a number field. A has geometrically simple reduction for a density one set of primes. Um, here, density one, you may need to pass to a finite field extension. If and only if the endomorphism algebra is commutative. So let me just make a remark to give you some feel about this conjecture. Is this side is actually e uh, so so no. Sorry. This side is actually easy in the sense is like if the uh, endomorphism algebra I use in the knot to denote the endomorphism algebra is some division algebra. 
then you can pick up place V of k such that the division algebra D split. And then you'll see that A over the finite fields associated to the place V is not simple. Because somehow you are in the Morphism algebra has a, like GLN, and so it contains like lots of copies of simple, uh, not just the one copy of abelian varieties. And uh, it is a result of Zillner in 2014. He says, if I zoom the Moffat Tate conjecture, for A, let me just think this will not show up in the talk, so I'm not explaining what is Moffat Tate conjecture. I just say Moffat Tate conjecture is true for abelian surfaces. So assume the Moffat Tate conjecture for A, then the conjecture of I, Morty, and Patenka holds. And he even gives an uh, explicit description about which finite field extension that you should go to. And I would like to also mention, like, historically, uh, Charles Darrow. Did the case when the endomorphism of A equal to Z and the dimension equals to two and a six. This is in nineteen ninety-seven. It was before like Pink proved lots of cases for the Malfortet conjecture. So back then only you have CS proof for Malfort conjecture for like two and six and blah blah blah. Okay, so the example here I would like to say. Yeah, so they want to tell you like who, what kind of field extension you should go to. So his result says for our abelian surface over Q with real multiplication. Uh, let me assume the case when you pass you don't have any extra, you don't have any extra in the morphisms. So that's all you have. And then AFL bar is simple for density one set of primes over Q. So which means like the other way is like the non-simple part is density zero and over Q, which means that you don't have any way to use Chapitoff density theorem to say anything about the, that you have infinitely many places or whatever for this set. Um, okay. Now I would like to state the theorem that I proved with announce. Yes? What is the base field? Oh, any any number field. Number field. Number field. Uh, a over number field. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we have a technical assumption here, which we hope to remove after we understand the Schmar integral model of Schumacher variety better. Um, but let me just state it for this. Um, seems that's the theorem we proved now. So after passing to k, where a over k has semi-stable reduction everywhere, assume that for any place divides two times the discriminant of f, so these are places where the integral model of, I mean, is a bit tricky than the integral model of Schumacher is a bit tricky than, than the other place. So then for all these places, um, AFV bar is either simple or strictly semi-stable. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so, so we want to remove this assumption soon, hopefully. OK, then that's the main part of the theorem. So A FL is not simple for infinitely many primes L of Q. So we said actually this density zero set is not a finite set, it's an infinite many set. Um, before I say something about why we wouldn't believe this heuristically to be true, and uh, what are the related results, some people may already have in mind what are the related results, I would like to first make a remark. Is if your endomorphism ring is strictly larger, So you have these three cases. The first case is like A itself is not simple to begin with. Then this theorem is trivially true. Uh, the second case when you have um, A is, has complex multiplication. And in this case, this theorem is also true because you have a positive density of super singular reduction. And uh, every super singular abelian variety is isogeny to the product of super singular elliptic curves. Uh, so you may ask whether we can prove something like you have infinite many super singular reduction. So far, we don't know. Yeah, so this is weaker than you have like infinite many super singular reduction. OK, so the last thing I will say, so you have three cases. It's like the endomorphism algebra of A is a quaternion algebra, then you just uh, use this remark here that you have in so many places which your A, the reduction is not simple. OK. So for these type of things, it's like you may relate this to Frobenius, the, the irreducibility or reducibility of Frobenius polynomials. And uh, so the set of Tate conjecture, oh, I should. The set of state conjecture is a standard tool if you want to get some heuristic on like, what you believe to be true or not. So, I would like to talk about heuristics and the So, for abelian surfaces, it's the work of And we consider as 
I L equals to the so we want to get something like place the same row as choice for you to curve. So choice is just you add two rows together. And uh, because we have the norm of L to the a half, so you divide it by root L to the half, so this thing is inside minus two to two. And the distribution, because when you have real multiplication for GL2 type of abelian varieties, it behaves the same as elliptic curves. So, oh, I should mention that one example of our theorem is like you can take a, a modular form with Fourier coefficient inside the quadra real quadratic field, and then by Shimura Tanyama that you can construct a, a, a you can construct lots of uh, abelian surfaces to satisfy the conditions of this theorem. And then basically our theorem says something about something like I did not write, write down the explicit, but it says something about the uh, Fourier coefficients of the modular form. Okay, so the special thing conjecture talks about that. Um, talks about the distribution of the pair S1L and the S2L. So the distribution of this one is given by the probability, the probability measure. Uh, 
one, base change to F D bar, is isogenous to E2, base change to F D bar. Any questions about the state of theorem or the heuristic and the, uh, the results? OK. Then I'll talk about the strategy of proof. Then Schumer writes this one company. But for my case, the uh, I use like one of the things is so when you want to move beyond the modular curve case. in the morning in Prof. 
Professor Andreas has called, uh, he calls them uh, Higner divisors. But in this case, it's classical. So it's actually, I put a, a word arithmetic here, means that they have some integral structure. But it's the complex picture actually goes back to a first from which and the subject. So I will call them arithmetic first from which subject divisors. Again, has a nice description of how to see these divisors inside the uniform the complex uniformization of this, which is a double copy of the upper half plane. But here, I would like to give you a modular interpretation. Which so first, we always use the usual letter to denote something which is over purely over characteristic zero, and the um, curly one to denote something over the ring of integers. So. TR, and for simplicity, because probably I choose the wrong polarization, but since I already did it, so, so that will be the polarization. And for this case, um, these are those points such that B has a special, I'll explain the word special in a minute, but you just view that it has an extra in the morphism. of degree r divided by d. So I restrict myself to the case, uh, this is discriminant of f. I restrict myself to the case when the discriminant of f divides r. Uh, in this paper, they end up have something which is of degree r because this is due to our different choice of polarizations. Okay, so, so by special in the morphism, one way to view it before I actually give you the definition again, is like it gives you an extra element in the neural sovereign lattice. So for everything inside the Hilbert modular surface, you have the neural sovereign lattice of this abelian surface to be rank two. But once you are on a special divisor, you have a neural sovereign lattice to have rank three. So special, what are special endomorphisms? So these are elements inside the endomorphism of B, such that um, it, doesn't really commute with the OF action, but commutes with the OF action sigma, um, sigma linearly means this means the um, unique non-trivial Galois action on the uh, totally real field. And the Rosati involution of S equals to itself. So here the Rosati involution, I just uh, used the element of one inside OF. That's why I said in the whole talk, you only need to know that A is a principally polarized abelian variety. Um, so, for elements which is like stable by the Rosati involution, then you get a jump for the narrow sovereign rank. Okay, so, and uh, the next thing I want to say is like, throughout this talk, to make life easy for later applications, I'll only work with the case that, so, only work with the case is TR is compact in the Hilbert modular surface. So I would like to give you an example about the compact. So this corresponding to Schmerer curves, uh, not the modular curves. And uh, so one thing you can choose is like, actually that's the one that we are going to work on. It's like R would be this discriminant times Q times T square. Q is uh, inert prime in F and the T is anything inside Z, and we can choose any, so, so later on we'll use the theorem of Bunet that you can actually avoid finite in many places. Okay, because compactness comes from this is not a norm of any ideal inside OF. Okay, so. In our paper, the result is about that you have infinitely many primes, which means that we don't really need to care about every places. 
And uh, that's why one cheating way to define the integral model of the uh, pars bromwich sagay divisors is you just uh, take the Zerowski closure and then you just uh, have a flat divisor. And uh, that is enough for the application. So PR will be the Zerowski closure. inside H. Mm, the next thing I want to say is like, I don't have a good, um, I, I personally don't know an easy proof of the following fact, but you just uh, assume as a fact in the sense is like, because TR is compact in H. So this is a special case of the famous uh, Morata conjecture, which has already been, been settled for the Hodge type Schubert varieties. So if you're saying the generic fiber is compact, then every B inside uh, TR has potentially good reduction everywhere. So this is one of the reasons that's why we choose Compact divisors because you can avoid working with bad reductions. And uh, so, the second thing so, every point, so you can actually put a tilde here. And uh, so, if a point B is inside a special fiber, then B is not geometrically simple. A quick proof is uh, anything in character zero has narrow survey rank three. You go to character P, you must have an even number, which means you have narrow survey rank four. And you just look at the list about what can you have, what you can have for the narrow survey rank four abelian surfaces. Then you see like it's definitely not simple. Okay, so we try to prove A is not simple, which means I want the my one cycle A to intersect the special divisors. And uh, for, uh, for me, the next thing I want to say is like, since this is something uh, stable under the heck orbit, so which means like I will not work with all the special divisors. This is one thing that you can do, but I will work with the heck orbit of the abelian variety. The reason for this is like I still don't know how the general theory of giving green function for these special divisors to give me the right asymptotic that I'll talk about later. So, so this here, let me just put down what I just said is the idea of the proof is will, let me just put T frac P A. I'll explain to you soon what does this mean, but this is some high orbit. And uh, then you intersect it with a finite sum. This is a finite sum of the hertzsprung sagay divisors. Uh, I'll tell you which finite sum we are going to pick soon. And uh, so if I put a hat here, I'll explain to you how to put a hat here soon. Then you decompose this into a sum all the places. So I just uh, use L and the infinity here because although we need to pass to a field extension K to make sense of the intersection theory, but everything is stable under the Gawa action. So, and we only care about whether it intersects or not. We don't really care about numbers. That's why I just uh, use um, the places over Q. So you have the local terms. Uh, in particular, if at L, so it'll be whether so T P A and uh, sigma C R T R intersect at L. So if this is not zero, this is what imply. It's not an if and only if condition, but it will imply that my uh, A F L bar is not simple. So okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to give you a global asymptotic of the whole thing, uh, give, which is a lower bound. 
and I'll give you a uh, asymptotic for the local terms, which is the upper bound. So the asymptotic here will be so so p will be the size of the hack orbit data. So the global thing asymptotically will be p times log p as p goes to infinity, and the local term will be a little o of p log p as p goes to infinity. So which means that this intersection must happen at infinity many places. And you only have finite many Archimedean places, so you have infinite many finite places the intersection happen. That's why you have infinite many places that it's not simple. Okay. So then I would like to talk about what is this and what is that and the, why this one is P log P. Any questions about the strategy of the proof? Um, as you've seen in the lectures, is floating tides is something that we have been studied a lot, and so which means it's like one way to one way to give this, and also compute the whole thing is to using Borchardt's theory to relate this to some Hilbert module forms, and uh, then. Once you have a module form, then like we have an invariant matrix, the Peterson matrix, that gives you the nice green function. And then use the relationship between Fortin's height and the, the line bound of define your module forms. You actually see this one is actually related to the Fortin's height. Evaluate on the heck of it. So that's next section. I would like to talk about the global term. So, as mentioned, you use virtual theory. Um, so many people have been working on this subject, but I just want to mention two people. No, I, I, I want to mention everyone's name, but since there's so many, I just want to mention two people that I cite the, their paper for references in our paper. So, Bune and uh, Holman. So, it is from Holman's book that I learned about that how you do the Birch's theory arithmetically. Uh, I found this reference in the paper of Professor Andreata and the other people on average comments. Uh, oh, I also found this uh, theorem of Bruni also in your paper. Okay, so, so it says the following. So the lemma, uh, which is not actually a lemma, it has inputs of these theorems, says that you have a uh, Hilbert model form um, psi of positive weight um, such that, uh, okay, and let me put the word over Q bar. Over Q bar means that its free coefficient is inside Q bar. In other words, it's like if you use the theory of the orthomorphic vector bundles that Professor Borg is discussing in his talk, like you do everything like over number field or even integrally, that you can make sense about uh, modular forms, more than just over C, but over number field. Okay, so you have such a Hilbert modular form such that its divisor is sum of find too many special divisors where CR is inside Z, and R is of form mm, D times Q fixed, and the times T squared. So basically it's like, um, you just uh, have one of them, and then the others are come from the um, pullback by the hack operator. And so which means like more or less they have the kind of same whatever property that you want. Um, Okay, so you have a divisor which, oh, you have a Hilbert module form whose divisor are the special divisors. And uh, also you can avoid um, Q and T to be divided by a finite set of primes. So I would like to mention this 
detail here in the sense is like, in general, during the intersection theory on bad fibers are hard. However, the thing is like, uh, we choose, we, so the thing is like, the, our proof, the actual proof goes to the following is like, we assume that you have a finite set of primes such that the intersection is not zero. And then we try to just avoid that finite set of primes to make these divisors have a nice smooth integral model all over the place. That's why you don't have uh, improper intersection anywhere. So the intersection is easy to compute. Okay, so this gives you a modular form. And also we have the Hodge line bundle. So let me just uh, redefine the Hodge line bundle because I want it to work rather than just uh, add the good reduction locus. So on the Toronto complexification, you have a universal semi-abelian varieties. with the identity section E. And this automorphic nine bundle actually gives you 14's height. So it's the determinant of E pullback of omega one A over H. So this is slightly different from um, the definition in the lecture by Professor Andreata is like he used, actually he used the push forward. That they are the same like when you have this to be abelian variety, but this one is the one that even also works for the semi-abelian variety. So, and uh, so we can consider uh, Psi as a rational section of the line bundle omega tensor K um, H. So omega times k gives you weight k Hilbert module forms. So this is, I should say, meromorphic. Although Bune has some theory how to deal with the meromorphic property, but in our application, it doesn't matter. So it gives you a rational section of the um, line bundle, which actually defines you the 14th height. So which means we have the following. Um, so the divisor, psi, now we build it over z, since you have an integral theory of um, modular forms, is the same as the Zerowski closure, and then you're up to some, this is like, these are vertical divisors. only need an asymptotic in the end, so the vertical divisors doesn't matter, although if we work hard enough, we may be able to get rid of them. So the upshot I would like to mention is, so somehow it's the global contribution there is 14 height. So the lemma, we have k times the 14 height of any Abelian right, uh, of an abelian surface with real multiplication is up to a constant independent of B. So uh, assume B is over K. So it'll be 1 over K. The intersection of B with sigma CRTR minus. So in this case, actually, Psi gives us the green function. So the, uh, because Psi is give me a section, so the green function is just the, the minus log of the uh, norm of the section. So it'll be sum over all the complex embeddings. Um, there's some terms about the stacky issue that I'm not going to mention, but it's up to that constant times log Psi. And this is the Peterson matrix. I'll evaluate on B. So apply this lemma to the elements inside the Heck orbit, which means that the global chain is actually the sum of the 
floating site on certain hack orbits. So now I'm going to define you a good class of hack orbits. Uh, Anas and I know how to compute uh, asymptotic for the floating site. Any questions? So, hack orbits. So, in this talk, although not many minutes left, P is also a, always a prime which split completely in the narrow class field of F. Uh, this comes from because the Schmur, the Hilbert module variety defined by some group may not be connected. That's why you need to be a little bit careful when you define the hack of it. So we can write P equals to frac P, frac P prime as ideals inside OF. And uh, by the assumption, we can always write P as a principal uh, ideal. And uh, lambda is totally real, uh, totally positive. And we consider this element 1 lambda inside GL2F. Uh, if you use the analytic description of Schumer right, you see that this one actually gives you a correspondence on the Schumer writing. So this will define as the hack of it. OK, so but let me just give you a more interpretation about what's going on. So elements inside T frac P of A are one to one corresponding to degree P subgroups of the frac P torsion of A. So you have P plus one elements here. So the proposition I want to state now is inspired from the work of Otsir, where he dealt with the case when for abelian varieties with ordinary reduction at a fixed prime, he did it for any abelian varieties in the Ziegel modular in the Ziegel Schumer variety, and uh, showed that. So you have the sum of the floating height on uh, every element inside the hack orbit, and uh, then you can minus p plus one times the floating height of A, and you ask what happens to the term which is left, and uh, that term he showed is independent of which A you, you start from, and. Uh, Actually, in the ordinary case, is you can actually compute what is that term, and then you see that what's the asymptotic. Okay, so the proposition. Uh, a side remark I would I should mention is like if you do Otsir's result uh, for this setting, and uh, you need to do the same computation at the end, and the user theorem by well solving says that for a binary surface with real multiplication with in the morphism ring exactly OF, then you have a density one set of primes over Q, which has ordinary reduction. So it already have give you lots of choices of the hack orbit. So that'd be enough, but we, our goal is to do it beyond A over Q case. So the, this proposition will be used for at that moment. So we assume that A has good reduction At P. So if A is over a number of fields, so it means it has good reduction at every prime above P. Then the sum of four things height is so you have one term which is like the four things height of A plus P minus one over two. Not P. So, I'll not mention how you show that this term is independent of A. I'll just uh, tell you how to compute this term. So, you use the modular interpretation there, saying that you have P plus one point, and you use Fortin's formula. Fortin's formula says if the kernel is et al., then you have plus 
half log p. If the kernel is multiplicative, then you have minus half log p. And uh, you, one can show by the modular interpolation, you have p of them. This is only a local statement. So p of them you have a tau. One of them you have multiplicative. That's why you have p minus 1. So like the asymptotic, as I just said, is p log p as p goes to infinity. Any questions? So for the last 10 minutes, I would like to say a little bit about how you bound what's going on for the local terms. Okay. So. so the first thing I want uh, to mention is like for both Archimedean and non-Archimedean place, although the strategy in the end are quite different. Um, but the general philosophy is the same. So you have two things to do. The first thing is like, uh, you want to show that you always fix that epsilon which is very small, that only epsilon p elements in tp hit a well-chosen neighborhood of the special divisors. So which means, like, for most of them, that the multiplicity is bounded. And uh, you only have epsilon p elements that you need to work a bit on to bound the uh, intersection multiplication uh, in the intersection multiplicity in the local formula. So the sec second thing you want to say is like uh, the closest point in TP to the special divisor has multiplicity approximately O log P. So which means like for these points you have epsilon P times log P, which is asymptotic smaller than P log P. Um, so we get inspired from um, Charles' work is like we don't prove this for every prime, we prove it for most of the primes. Then it's good. Okay, so for the Archimedean case, this comes from, this is a consequence, just a direct consequence for the um, equal distribution of heck orbits, especially when this one is complex, you even don't need to worry about anything. So this is a direct con consequence of the general theorem by um, Comets, Yomo, and all. And uh, so for the second thing, uh, the idea is the same for both Archimedean and non-Archimedean place is you reduce. Mm. So remember I mentioned at the beginning is like you have uh, orthogonal type Schumacher varieties. And uh, so you have a vector space V, you have a 2 2 form. And then each, uh, those intersection of special divisors, those special points gives you a quadratic form. And you try to show that um, the P that you want to rule out are those primes which is representable by a certain quadratic form, and the, the quadratic form has the discriminant gets larger and larger. That's why by standard theorems in doing prime number theorem, it's like, so for primes represents by a sequence of quadratic form where the discriminant is getting larger and larger, then the density of primes is goes to zero. So which means you only need to rule out a very small set of primes, so that the rest of the prime, most of them, you have this property. So let me make more precise about what I said. So it just says when you have point B inside TPA and the B prime, TP2A close to the special divisor, 
then like both Archimedean name and non Archimedean, although the meaning is different, you'll see that A is close to both. So this hack operator X on TR, that will give you TP1. So it, it close to uh, elements R1 here. And so you have TP2, R2. In the, in the non Archimedean case, it's easy to see. So if A mod L to the N is on this and on that, so A mod L to the N is on the intersection of this and that. And you can make sense of this because we assume these two things are compact. So you can make sense of it even in the Archimedean space. So which means it's like you study the intersection of these two things. And uh, my point A is close to this intersection. And, uh, and then if you have a third prime P3 and uh, R3, so the thing is like when you use a North core type of property for uh, CM abelian varieties to say it's like two CM abelian varieties of bounded discriminant cannot be very close to each other. Uh, I need to be more precise, but so which means like if you choose a point here, so if you get an ACM here, the ACM also lies in a third prime. So this is the special point which gives you the quadratic form, which represents all these primes. And then when you let P gets larger and larger, so this point will be closer and closer to A, still by a North cost property, the discriminant of this one should get larger and larger. So the discriminant of the quadratic form should get larger and larger. That's why you rule out fewer and fewer primes. Uh, in this is, um, true in character zero that you have a quadratic form, but in character P that's no longer true. So the idea is like you try to use um, gross theory of quasi-canonical liftings. Uh, for if you have ordinary reduction, you can always do the CRT uh, canonical lifting that gives you the right lift, and you can do everything as in characteristic zero. However, if you have super singular reduction, then you need to use gross theory in moving taste spaces and. Uh, then so far in the paper, we borrow an idea from uh, Francois is that we only put certain conditions on them so that in certain conditions, this thing can lift. And this is related to the restriction of A over Q, but we try to remove it. Um, so as far as you can lift things to character zero, then you still have a quadratic form and the same thing. So for this part is, Mm, if you, so in part two, we already construct lots of uh, quasi-canonical liftings. So as I said, ordinary case is easy, so we don't need to worry about that. For the super singular case, uh, we are, it's like, if you don't have any lift, which means the closest point cannot be very close, you are already done, you already have a good asymptotic for the local contribution. So the only bad situation you really need to prove some type of you prove some type of result for hack orbit in the periodic set. In the aortic setting is always hard. Is that you already can approximate it by quasi canonical liftings. Once you can approximate by quasi canonical liftings, then you are still in the world of the vintage theory. And you can use the vintage theory to get an upper bound of what's going on here. So and you put step one, two together to get um, at the end, the, we, we don't get any type of power saving. We only have a little O of P log P, but that is enough to conclude that you have infinity many primes with simple reduction. And I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>